Hello yogis and welcome back to another beautiful day. It's around 5 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. in the afternoon in Bali, Ubud, Indonesia. And today I would like to give a small demonstration as to how we should practice headstand. Now some yoga traditions say that we should be practicing headstand early in the morning. Some of them say that late afternoon is very good. Personally, I'm not a big fan of all of these rules. I just think do whenever you feel that it suits you, um, but just do it, yeah? So just practice it. If you want to do it early in the morning because it makes you feel good, by all means do that. But if you want to do it at 2 a.m. midnight, you can also do that. Even though at 2 a.m. midnight might not be the best time because it will not make you sleep. It energizes the body, huh? Um, so for beginners, headstand is not really recommended and mostly we want to try to do exercises with strength in the neck and I will make a video on this soon but for now let us see how headstand is practiced and I know that in some yoga traditions uh, we are told to just clasp the hands and place them on the floor like this personally I think it is more effective to do something different and that is how I was taught by my teacher so I'm gonna give you that demonstration today so let's start with placing the hands and the, the lower arms on the floor because in the end these are going to give you the foundation of balance. Huh? So we're going to clasp the hands and then I'm going to turn the inner wrist points towards the floor. Now the inner wrist points are these points and I want to turn them towards the floor. So it's a bit of a strange movement that you're making there in the, uh, in the wrists but this is what you want to teach yourself huh, to do that. Turning the inner wrist points these points towards the floor. Clasping the hands, digging the elbows down, and then it's very important we curl the toes under and first we lift the body up and then we walk the feet forward until we can actually place the head down. And from here you can either lift one leg up and come up into a headstand. Pressing those inner wrist points towards the floor, lengthening the heels or the legs towards the ceiling, rolling the shoulders out away from the ears. And if you can do it from here, pressing the wrists down and using your core to come up into a full headstand with both legs at the same time. Press those heels away, lift up, roll the shoulders out. And really sink down onto the crown of the head. And both legs down. And then whenever we come out of headstand, we should always be mindful, and especially when we're beginning practitioners, just rest the head a little bit onto the floor, relax the neck, yeah? So maybe we can have a look at that from the side. So again, clasping the hands and turning the inner wrist points towards the floor, really make sure that you're digging those elbows down so that you're really creating a stable base for yourself. And then I curl the toes under and I lift and I walk the feet in until I place the head. Until I feel comfortable here. Keep turning those wrists and from here I lift. And press the heels away towards the ceiling. Roll the shoulders out away from the ears. And again, resting the forehead onto the floor. And then from here, you can come up. Now, headstand should be done for about 10 minutes. 
and if possible 20 because then it really starts to give the right effect to the body. Yeah? Traditionally by real yogis these postures, the inverted postures like shoulder stand and headstand are practiced for long periods of time. So that is what we should aim for and that is what we should practice towards. Um, if you can do headstand please have a look at my upcoming video for strengthening the neck muscles and I hope that this video taught you something in order to progress in your own practice and um, my teacher always told me you know when I started doing headstand I couldn't do anything and I was always suffering my neck was in pain and uh, I, I used to ask her so if I'm in pain should I continue to do it and she said well it's a bit of a catch-22 because on the one hand you don't want to you don't want to overexert the neck but on the other hand if you don't practice it you're never going to strengthen the neck so we have to find that balance and see how far we can go and what our limits actually are but, but without without really hurting ourselves so um, thanks for watching again hope to see you soon <laughs> bye